Okay, next up is uh, electromagnetic waves. Hopefully you already know the electromagnetic spectrum, but you do need to know some facts about all of the bits along it, and you also need to be able to give estimates of the size of the wavelengths for the different sections of the EM spectrum. So um, let's just make sure we've got an idea of what we mean by EM spectrum. It's a continuous spectrum of waves, which happens to include visible light. When I say continuous, what I mean is there isn't really these big cutoffs where things become different. It's just sort of a sliding scale where gradually um, we change the wavelengths and some of the properties change and gradually we decide, okay, we're going to call this bit um, visible or we're going to call this bit infrared. And the visible is, is a bit more limited because it's specifically based on what our eyes can see. The other ones are, are a bit vague. Um, so you don't need to stress too much about having exact numbers for things. Okay, so we should know the order, and um, we tend to talk about them in terms of decreasing wavelength. So if I start with the longest wavelength, that's radio, then micro, infrared, visible light, UV, X-ray, gamma rays. So that's going longest wavelength to shortest wavelength. You can be asked to list it in the other way around, though. So you could be asked to list it in terms of decreasing frequency and energy, or energy, in fact, I might not say both. In which case, I'd start with gamma, because they are the highest frequency and the highest energy. Then it goes x-rays, UV, visible light, infrared, microwaves, radio waves. So that goes highest to lowest frequency. It also goes highest to lowest energy as well. Um, so you need to know the order and you need to know the properties. Now, there are a few things they all have in common. First of all, they all transfer energy. Second, they are all transverse waves. Third, they all travel at the speed of light, because they are all the same thing. So 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and they travel at that speed through a vacuum. Uh, four is they can all be reflected, refracted, and diffracted, three things that we will talk about more later on. So let's just get some quick properties of all these things. So uh, radio waves, as I said, are the longest, and typically their length is about 100 meters. So that would be their wavelength. Uses of radio waves, radio and TV communication, inside MRI scanners, and um, astronomy. So it gives us a way to see more of the universe. Next up are microwaves. They're sort of in the realm of 10 centimetres. So that's kind of the middle of the range. Um, they are used for uh, cooking, mobile phone communication, satellite TV, and astronomy. Uh, that's a map of the universe, of the background microwave radiation which helps us learn things about the Big Bang, for instance. We also need to know about the dangers of microwaves. So microwaves can cause internal heating of body tissue. Basically, they can cook you. Um, we should know that microwave ovens have got grids inside them, metal grids that prevent the microwaves from leaking out. And there are also concerns that have been raised about mobile phones and links to brain cancer as well. So, um, Oh, I should say on the brain cancer thing, there is no evidence of that at the moment, but there haven't been many long-term studies yet. So um, I would say from a scientific standpoint that the jury is out on that one. We have no conclusive evidence either way. Um, so it's a big unknown that one at the moment. Okay, uh, infrared waves. Typically they have lengths of a millionth of a metre, so about one micrometre. Um, and obviously I'm sure we've all seen infrared photography before or thermograms as they're called, excuse me. Um, so other things you use infrared for, uh, cooking food, so that's how your convection oven works, uh, remote controls, uh, we use them inside fiber optics as intruder alarms, so in your burglar alarm it will be an infrared sensor, night sights, so if you've got night vision goggles, and also astronomy can help us see sort of beyond things that are emitting different types of wavelengths. Right, next up, visible light. Here are some numbers you must, must know. So 4 times 10 to the 7 metres is violet, and 7 times 10 to the 7 metres is red. You may often come across them as being 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. It's often how they're quite, when we tend to talk about visible light or the wavelength of light, we tend to talk in nanometers. So 400 to 700 is the approximate range. You need to know which end is which. You could be asked to suggest the colour of light being given its wavelength. And um, pretty much they're only going to expect you to go from red to blue, really. Um, I've put violet on there, but you could equally call that end blue, and that would be absolutely fine. Um, you just need to know that colour range. 
So what do we use visible light for? Well, seeing is the obvious one. Uh, photography, um, optical fibres again for photosynthesis. I mean, we don't use it, but we'd certainly use the products of it. Um, I think sight's pretty much the obvious one there. Okay, next up we've got UV. UV has a wavelength of about 10 to the minus 8 metres. And um, some uses of it are fluorescent lamps, security devices, dentistry, pest control, and astronomy. You're noting, noticing the trend yet with the astronomy thing. Um, with UV, we also need to talk about the fact that there are different types of UV radiation, that there are three, in fact, um, that we need to know about. So, I'll tell you a bit about them, and then I'll try and give you the way that's useful for you to remember them. So, UVC is the first type. UVC does not bother the skin at all. It's also like type in the uh, ozone layer. Sometimes it's used in germicidal lamps or mercury arc lamps. Basically, UVC is the uh, lowest energy one, and it it's, just doesn't get into the atmosphere at all. UVB is uh, the one that mostly affects our skin. It mostly hits the epidermis or the outer layers, and it is the main thing that causes sunburn. Um, even though it's quite strong, it still can't travel through glass, though, which is important. Uh, next thing is UVA. UVA is the main contributor to skin cancer and skin ageing. Uh, used to be that we didn't think it was a big deal, but now we know it is. Um, and it goes deeper into your skin than UVB radiation. And it also can't go through glass either. So we've got UVA, UVB, UVC. So you need to remember what these things do to the human body. So UVA causes skin ageing. UVB causes skin burns and UVC can't get through the atmosphere. You see what I did there with the ABC. Um, if you want to remember the other things that they cause as well, that's absolutely fine. But those three, that one that goes to each A, B and C, aging burns, can't get through the atmosphere, those will always get you marks and you will only ever need to know sort of one feature of each type of UV radiation. So if you remember that, you're sorted. Okay, next up we've got x-rays. So x-rays have a wavelength of about 10 to the minus 9 metres. Uses, well, x-ray photographs, uh, airport security, cancer treatment, and astronomy. I thought it wasn't going to be there, but it was. Um, next up, gamma rays. They have a wavelength of about 10 to the minus 11 metres. And uses of gamma rays kill cancer cells. They also cause you cancer. That's one of those little ironies of life. Um, we can use them to kill harmful bacteria in food, to sterilise surgical instruments, and I didn't put it on, but I did show you a picture. We can use these for astronomy as well. Basically, everything in the universe gives off EM waves, so by detecting them, we can look at stuff that's in the universe. That's why astronomy is on every single one of these lists. Okay, that is it for the EM spectrum. Hopefully, a lot of recap of stuff you already knew, as well as some new little tidbits to add to your knowledge. If you've got any questions, do remember to ask me when you see me.